It's like we're twin flames in a different life Deep connection, lights a spark It's like you know me in the depths of my heart We're dreamers Welcome to episode four of Chateau Dreams. This is its second reincarnation. I have um, slashed and burned the first and consigned it to the YouTube bin. So if you haven't seen it, I'm afraid it's gone forever. That's probably no loss though, because some of the quality issues we were having were just awful. So apologies to those of you that did watch it. Luckily, a good friend of mine is going to sit down with me tomorrow, I believe in a Zoom call to give me a hand on some of the technical aspects. So I hope you see great improvements after that. Well, on to today's episode. So today, we start off with a look at the marble floor in the Winter Salon. My goodness, it was a bit of a mess. After that, a few snapshots of when George arrived and some of the work that he was able to do, Man Friday. And there's not so much speaking in that part, so I apologise for that. For our French culture section today, I thought that we would ha take a look at the flower festival the family and I went to at Seuston's. After that, I thought we'd interview Beans, who is one of our lovely volunteers here. And the volunteers are incredibly helpful to all the work that we do here. Because as you've seen in the Chateau Tour, it's an enormous project. And I think that's about it for today. We'll be on with our next Chateau Tour next week which uh, will probably be in a few days, and I'm just thinking about which aspect of the chateau to cover. But in the meantime, thank you very much for coming here today to be with us, and I hope you're having a fantastic time wherever you are. So these are the pieces. There's a piece here that's, as you can see, this has been done, and that's been done, it's been scraped off. And these ones here, I'm in the process of doing, and as you can see, the difference in color, um, is quite significant. So literally is a case of taking this and scraping off. Um, I've got quite a few tiles to do here. I've got quite a few tiles to do here, so um, once again. What's your story? What's your sign? It's like we're twin flames in a different life Deep connection, lights a spark It's like you know me in the depths of my heart We're dreamers this week for your questions. Um, I will try and give you the answers where I know them. So the first question was about when we were pressure washing the kitchen, which as you know took some time. What did we do with the ceiling? Did we clean it? We tried to clean it. We tried really hard. It's um, It was definitely washed off and sterilized, but actually the staining is all still there as you've seen. We've got some plaster work to do in the kitchen, and after that is done, then we're going to decorate all of the kitchen in one go. So unfortunately, there wasn't that much we were able to achieve with the kitchen ceiling. Luckily, it's a long way up, so you don't tend to notice it too much. But yeah, we'll be, all be absolutely thrilled when that's dealt with. So that was the first one. Now, there was a question this morning on again on the Chateau Tour to ask how large is the castle of the Chateau in terms of uh, square meters? I need to find out about that because the honest answer is I don't actually know. Also, there was in the same question a question about how many rooms there are. So sitting at the dinner table last night, I counted them up and there's actually in the castle itself, I think there's 53 rooms. But as to what they break down in, in terms of bedrooms, bathrooms, reception rooms and everything else, I need to actually get out a piece of paper and write it down. So I will do that and I will give you the answer to that in the next episode. As I mentioned before, in estate agent terms in France, they don't tell you with some of the chateaus, actually the size of them, they work in terms of renovated and non-renovated space. And in fact, we have still been finding a number of rooms that we didn't know existed. 
which is quite good fun. And uh, also there was a blocked in room in one of the buildings that I went into this week. It was behind some corrugated iron, which was quite interesting and an absolutely fascinating room. Hasn't probably been touched, I guess, for a hundred years. So I will show you that maybe on the next tour. Maybe that's a good one to do. Anyway, um, I hope that that answers some of your questions and anything else uh, I will definitely let you know about. And as for the lovely lady that asked about the satellite, can we paint the satellite dish with some lovely ivy or something that's on, side of the, on the side of the pigeon air? Do you know what? I think that's a fantastic idea. I don't know if it will affect the reception or not. So if any of you guys know, please do let me know. Um, and if not, I'll ring the satellite company who are great and see if we can do something because gosh, wouldn't that make it so much better? So, so much better. So great idea. And thank you for that. Bye-bye. So thank you very much for all your help. What are you up to today? So I'm currently making a new door to go into the rose garden. So I built the wall back up for the rose garden. And now I've pillaged the, uh, the top barn over there for all of this lovely live edge wood. So hopefully when it's all cleaned up, it's going to look perfect. But uh, it's a bit of a jigsaw job at the minute. So you kind of have to sort of slot it in and see how it's all going to go. But it's it should amazing. Be fine. Much like the wall, actually, which was also a jigsaw job. So. <laughs> well, nice. it's amazing. And do you, know, do you got any ideas on what sort of wood it is? I mean, I guess it came from here. I don't know. It must have come from here, but no, I can't tell. It's all sort of quite dirty at the minute, but yeah. hopefully. Huh. It's heavy stuff and very, very nice. So uh, I'm thinking maybe oak, but huh? it must have been from one of these trees. That's the thing. Cause who knows? So it's quite nice to be able to <laughs> recreate a door that was once growing somewhere in the grounds at some point, you know. Oh, thank you so much. Well, phenomenal skills and we look forward to seeing it progress. Thank Thanks, Adam. <laughs> So here we are um, in the glorious village of Bouston for the annual there, annual flower festival, which is really lovely, and the church and some flower demonstrations and bio things and all sorts of wonderful things for people buying plants. So as I said the other day, we're after the first frosts here now, so people can really get going with their planting. Um, we're very lucky. We have a lot more produce here than any other region of France. He's ready, let's go have a look. Oh, lovely ladies bring it to you.
Abby, what are you doing in there in the corner? Hmm? I've heard of the cat amongst the pigeons, but the cat amongst the chickens I'm not sure about. No wonder your coat's so glossy if you've been stealing eggs. I think... <laughs> hey, cool. So this is the lovely Bean, who I mentioned earlier on today, and uh, she's very kindly come to join me. But first, let me show you the teacups. What do you think, Beans? Oh, these are just so... We don't know if this will come out, but... I wonder. There's a little person inside the teacups. You can kind of see it. Maybe if I hold it right up. <laughs> it's that kind of magic. We don't use them very often because, frankly, they're like egg shy. But anyway, perfect for our live blossom tea. So, Beans, you come from Boise. Tell me about Boise. <laughs> what do you want to know? <laughs> what are the highlights? What's it like? Um, it's pretty chill, mm -hmm. I'd say, depending. Well, Boise specifically, because Idaho is pretty big. Um, it's pretty chill, so I'd say surfy. We don't have an ocean, but like lake. You can like surf on the lake, and we have a little. I don't want to sound stupid, but like that runs, and there's literally just a spot where everyone goes there, river, and surfs. And I'd say hippie. -ish. God, how lovely! And you've been, you've come back to us, which is brilliant. Um, and what have you been up to today? Because Beans is one of our wonderful volunteers on the volunteer program we have here. Um, I. I've been painting, and I'm not very <laughs> happy with my work today. I thought it was great. We had a we had um, in the little house. We have a room that was meant to be almond, which is almond green, and uh, guess what? It came out Shrek. Shrek Disney green. <laughs> so Beans has been trying to rectify that today. I think you did a great job. I think you did a great job. We'll have a look at it another time, guys. But it looks good. Did you go in there today? I went in earlier. Yes, but not this evening. Okay, don't go this evening because and then come in tomorrow afternoon. Okay. Okay, sounds sounds good. Sounds great. It'll be beautiful anyway. Don't worry about it. And it sounds, sounds great. <laughs> it'll be perfect. It's what it's meant to be. But thank you. And Beans has just been zipping around. You've been to Italy. You went to the Cannes Film Festival. Mm -hmm. So, you, would you mind just telling us which cities you? The best thing in Florence for me was the panini that I had. <laughs> I love it. It was so good. <laughs> and I made and, <laughs> and uh, I made a best friend. Her name's Ava, oh. and she's the English version of me. We laughed about cakes for like half an hour. I didn't know whether to be thrilled or terrified. I'm not quite sure which. <laughs> Both. How wonderful. Me, but like extremely dry humor. She's like, "Are you stupid? You stupid?" I'm like. And then she'd laugh because she's not because she's kidding. She I know. sounds terrifying. I'm terrified she's already. awesome. She's and in terms of things, sites that you saw, there, what was the best thing in Florence? Mm, best thing in Florence. There was a a garden. The I don't remember the name, but you pay like ten dollars to get in, and it was just the most. That's where I sent you the photo of uh, the unicorn that I yes. saw. Oh my god, it was so unreal. And every part you went into it was like a pretty big garden. It was just so unreal, and to think that people live there. I couldn't imagine. Is it literally, I haven't been, I'd love to go, is it literally a town museum, basically, something beautiful in every corner? Yes. Wait, the Florence or the garden? The garden. The garden, it, it, it's a, yeah. Well, both, actually. It is a museum, it's a, there's like an entry fee, so once you go in and then every corner is like absolutely insane, it's, it's just a garden. And Do you remember the name? It's on my phone. I'll look it up. And okay, then... great. We'll chuck it in the notes later. Enter voice over here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's all perfect. And um, then after that, where did you go after that? I went to Rome. I went to Rome. It was my favorite place in the whole world. It was so much fun. And and what happened near the treasure fountain? Could you just uh, fill me in? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I almost drove into the Trevi fountains mm -hmm. with the moped. Mm -hmm. Um, where a military officer stopped me and asked me what I was doing. <laughs> was he wearing blue? Um, can't remember. I was very... Ah! <laughs> like, Terrible. wow. Yeah, I was cracking jokes. He didn't think I was very funny. Okay, but you got a bit closer to the trade fountain than Benizma. What, what did you think of it? Oh, it was really pretty. <laughs> <laughs> and it's still in one piece? It's still in one piece. Okay, great. Piece. So where did you go to destroy... I mean, sorry, where did you go to see next? <laughs> I went to um, I went to a Malfi next, right? Yep, I went to a Malfi next. It was beautiful, mm -hmm. but yes, it was really crowded, oh, and the cool. transportation is confusing because if you don't have a car, you're taking the bus, and the roads are just so different mm -hmm. and uphill, downhill that you can't really time the bus very well, and they just don't come very often. 
and I decided to be quirky and naturey and stay 30 minutes up the mountains. So on top of getting to Main Town, you need to go 30 minutes up a mountain. So what would your advice be to somebody who's going to the Amalfi Coast? Don't stay in the mountains unless you have a car. So be right there. Yeah, but not Amalfi. I about that. The Viper? Mm -hmm. Not well. Not well. <laughs> <laughs> that was yesterday makes a reference that's like, you're like a Cleopatra. Mm -hmm, and yes. tells me the story about how she killed herself with one. And I was like, sure. I don't want to be like Cleopatra. <laughs> <laughs> she's, a, she's a cool woman, though. She is a cool woman. I like that. Right. I looked up the... I looked up Vipers last night. Yeah. And apparently the most painful death is by bite by viper and i was like why did she choose that <laughs> out of all the things she could have killed herself with she I just went the most painful way i know and allegedly it was in a basket of figs that was brought to her by her handmaid and and there were more than probably more than one. Oh my god i know amazing anyway on such a joyous note thank you beans You're what do you welcome. think of the lime tea by the way oh it's so good and it's i don't know makes you feel pretty chill a nice pre-dinner ritual that's what i thought So I thought we might go and discover what's in this room over here next time for our tour. What do you think?